Hey guys, welcome back to the next video in the series. Today's going to be a little bit of a long one because we're actually going through the inventory creation process and also I'm adding a hat to this guy right now. Um, I think uh, I have this hat right here, just a 3D model of a hat. We're going to put it on the character skeleton's hat socket that I just added. The hat socket's actually in the root origin point of the head bone. Pretty simple, you just right click it and then you add a socket and we're gonna put a hat on there so we're just gonna add a static mesh that way I can show you that's a skeletal mesh that way I can show you the difference in the next video about how to replicate skeletal meshes and static meshes and put them both on the network I add the hat mesh we'll put it as a child of the regular mesh and for the parent socket we'll select hat it's offset a little bit too much I think it's 90 degrees on the x-axis nope negative 90 our hat looks a little bit big, that's because the hair is a little weird, but uh, that's the size of it in the actual game. We'll go ahead and turn that off and we'll set up our system. So don't delete this, just clear it. Set that back to nothing. We'll actually set this dynamically. The next thing we want to do is we want to make a player state. So we'll go ahead and get a player state and just click that, select it. That's where we're going to actually hold the inventory of the player. So just uh, my player state. Open this up. In the variables we'll add inventory and set this to string and string array. Compile and save. That's pretty much all you have to do. Now in our actual game mode we'll set our player state class to my player state. All set. Next when I go back to our content we'll create a new folder and we'll call it pickups. And This is where we're actually going to make the pickups and all the items uh, that are in the, in the world. Go into blueprints and create a structure. Item structure. So this is where we're actually going to set up what our items are. We'll say name. We'll have our name be a string. We'll have a skeletal mesh. And we'll have a static mesh. And this is kind of optional, but you, for the sake of the tutorial, we're going to add it. You don't really need to do it, but because you can set up if this is blank, do this. If this is blank, do other things, you know, with simple logic. But we're going to go and make an actual enumerator for actually differentiating between the types. So I'm just going to call it types, and we'll just put shirt and hat just to make it simple. Uh, anyway, go ahead and save that. And then we'll just add our type. Cool. Now let's actually add the items that exist in the world. Um, I think it's in MISC. We'll go ahead and create a data table on the basis of the structure we just made. It's called item structure right here. Click OK and we'll call this items. These are the items that exist. We'll go ahead and make one. We'll call this green shirt. We'll set that to the green shirt and that is a shirt type. We'll call this blue shirt. Set that to the blue shirt. And then we'll populate the rest of these. And this will be our hat, so we'll actually set this to the hat, and this type is a hat. Next we'll actually make the item that exists in the world. We'll just make this a standard actor, and we'll call this world item. Now the world item is just going to show the item, so we'll just go ahead and preview how this looks. That shows up above the ground, I kind of want it to be like, and we'll keep it above a little bit. And maybe we'll spin it around or something and give it some kind of cool effect. Make a static mesh too, set that to hat. And we can clear both of these now that we've looked at how they look. We'll make a variable called item ID. This will just be a string. This represents the IDs that exist on our items. So, for example, these. Go ahead and make that instance editable. We'll compile and we'll make our default value shirt uh, green. I don't know. We'll do two simple things. I want the item to spin because I think it's cool. So on the event tick, we're going to set the actor rotation get actor rotation, split the struct pins, and add to the yaw just a little bit. Maybe 5 degrees per frame. Might be kind of fast, but we'll see. On begin play, we'll load a function that we're going to call, well, it's actually custom event. We'll call it load item. This gets the item ID. Get row. From the row name, we'll convert that to a name. Set items. And I just, I just did this backwards. We don't have to have the load item, we'll just load it when it begins. Go ahead and split this, we'll switch on the type. When it finds the row, it will set one of these. Set the skeletal mesh on the shirt to the shirt. 
set static mesh to the static mesh. Now we drop this in the world and since this is set to shirt green, this should appear as shirt green. There it is spinning in the world. We'll, go, we'll be able to stand over top of it and collect it in a little bit here. That is way too fast. Let's set this to like two degrees instead. And we'll scatter our props a little bit better. We'll put this here, we'll put this here. This can be our shirt blue. This will be our shirt red. And the last one will be our hat black. Again, these IDs are just originating from the data that's collected based on these names. We spawn in the world. There, those rotations are a lot better. There's our hat spinning. There's our shirt spinning. There's our other shirt spinning. And now we'll be able to go over to these and pick them up. To actually initiate the pickup phase, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a collision. So we'll type collision. We'll just use a sphere collision because that's the easiest. And we'll actually show it in the game. We'll set this to 64. No, 64 is way too much. Set this to like 40. And then when the player goes over top of it and begins overlap, we check to see if it's actually the player. In this instance, you don't technically have to do this, but we'll go ahead and cast to my character. If the cast fails, then we know that it's not the character that has entered, so that way we can check to see if it is the character. You can also just check the class, get the class, and see if the class is equal to, but this is the fastest way to do it. We're going to have to make this cast anyway to actually add the item to the inventory, so we'll see. Once the cast is made, we'll just destroy the actor. This destroys the self, so it should destroy the pickup. And then in between here and a little bit here, we're going to actually add it to the inventory. So let's walk up and collect it. Boom. Collected. Let's collect the other one. Yeah, cool. Those will add to our inventory now. Very nice. Next up, like I said, we're going to add it to the actual inventory. We're just going to go ahead and get the player state. We'll cast to my player state. And now we can get the inventory. Pretty nice. Add an item. And what are we going to add? Well, that's pretty simple. We add this, the item ID. Now to check if it works, I'm actually going to kind of strip this code out just a bit. Go to the actual player state here, and we're actually going to make a custom event. Add item. Same thing we did before. We just add this, and then we'll print this to the screen. Actually, I'll do you one even better. For each of these, we will append the index then the item itself. That way we can actually print the entire inventory when we get our stuff. Go ahead and remove this, add item, and then destroy the actor. We'll set the new item to our item ID. There we go. Look at that. Boom. Shirt blue. I'm actually running this on a server, so that's why it's run that. Shirt blue and hat black. Shirt blue, hat black, and shirt red. It's got all the stuff that we got. Everything has been added successfully to our inventories. And that's essentially the process for how that works. So in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of tie it all together. We're going to add a UI so you can actually click on the items and add them to your player and equip them. And then we're going to have that networked. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to give this video a like. Make sure to subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.